We begin tonight with breaking news. As I just mentioned, NBC News projects that the Republicans will take control of the House of Representatives in January. The Republicans have now secured 218 seats, the exact number they need for control. The results come with major consequences as we wade through this political era of zero consequences. Kevin McCarthy is now a major step closer to his precious, the gavel, as he was just nominated on Tuesday by House Republicans to serve as Speaker of the House when the new session of Congress starts in January. But McCarthy, or my Kevin, as Donald Trump calls him, faces the daunting challenge of having to wrestle a far right wing within his own party, including Marjorie Taylor Greene, Paul Gosar, Matt Gates. Talk about a toxic work environment. And while Marge is backing Kevin, Gates has said that he won't vote for Kevin McCarthy in January, no matter what. It all boils down to the blame game, something McCarthy's Senate, Senate counterpart is also entrenched in. Today, Mitch McConnell was comfortably reelected as the Republican Senate leader, even after the party failed to pick up seats in the chamber in the midterm elections. Now, there's a lot of finger pointing over what went wrong, from Senator Rick Scott saying his party didn't stand for any ideas, even though... I mean, actually, Rick, you are abundantly clear that your plan is to slash Medicare and Social Security. You have a lot of Republicans, even once zealous Trump allies, blaming the dear leader, while others are rushing to his defense. I think Senator McConnell's view is, is that Trump is largely to blame and that Republicans have an image problem because of Trump. I've decided that I don't agree with that. Some of the senators and point the finger at, at Donald Trump, and I think that is convenient. Uh, for Senate Republicans to to place the blame somewhere else. Um, my view is there's plenty of blame to go around. Meanwhile, Mitch McConnell, who Trump blames for the party's election losses, says voters were too spooked by the party's messaging and overall bad vibes. We underperformed among voters who did not like President Biden's performance in among independents and among moderate Republicans who looked at us and concluded too much chaos, too much negativity, and we turned off a lot of these centrist voters, which is why I never predicted a red wave to begin with. Okay, well, nice try, Mitch, placing the blame on everyone but the man in the mirror, because the truth is, the person who is most to blame for history's promise of a red wave turning out to be a red puddle is actually Mitch McConnell, because no one did more to save and salvage Donald Trump at every rotten moment in his presidency, lobbying his caucus to vote no on impeachment, refusing to investigate his flouting of the law, literally standing inert for four long years, and for one singular reason, the courts, to get Trump to sign off on the far right-wing judges that Mitch craved. No one did more to banish Roe v. Wade than the Republican Senate leader, who gloated over the fact that he blocked President Obama's Supreme Court pick, while practically galloping to stack the court with conservative judges under Trump to secure that outcome. Mitch tolerated and accepted the chaos and the horrors of a Trump presidency. He enabled it all because the power to shape the courts was the only thing he cared about. And then he got it. And it was Mitch and Donald's court that banished Roe, which in turn cost Republicans the election. Like McCarthy, McConnell served as Trump's enabler. But both are unwilling to blame themselves for the red puddle. I mean, will they ever blame Trump, who is now a candidate in 2024? Well, I wouldn't hold my breath if I were you. Joining me now is David Jolly, former Republican congressman from Florida, who is no longer affiliated with the party, and Sahil Kapoor, NBC News senior national political reporter and my colleague here uh, in the D.C. Bureau. It is so great to see you. I, wanted, I do want to start, though, with David. I want to play for you what Adam Kinzinger, who was on uh, Nicole's show uh, a couple of hours ago, and, and this is what he had to say about Kevin McCarthy, who is now the likely incoming Speaker of the House. Before the election, I started to notice he was defending Donald Trump more than he was defending his own members of Congress. But he is the guy, he is the entire reason Donald Trump is still a political figure. Because in the caucus, in the Republican caucus, after January 6th, there were some of us speaking out. There was a lot of crickets, people trying to figure out where was this gonna go. And the second Kevin McCarthy in his cowardice showed up to Mar-a-Lago, it changed the tenor in the caucus to like, I guess we're doing this, Donald Trump's saying, Kevin McCarthy is a coward. 
If he becomes speaker, it will be the worst time of his life, and history will not be kind to him. You know, David, it is very difficult to listen to people blame Donald Trump when the people who had the power to do something about Donald Trump, <laughs> both before January 6th and after, did what you just heard Kinzinger say. Your thoughts? Joy, can I say thank you, thank you, thank you. We, we are letting people get away with blaming Donald Trump for last Tuesday. And the truth is exactly as you have presented, which is he has been enabled and celebrated by a party. But even more so than that, I don't even like the term Trumpism because the truth is the proper word is today's Republican Party has embraced this hateful populism that was introduced by Donald Trump to the party, but it was embraced with welcome arms by the likes of Mitch McConnell, Kevin McCarthy, and and up uh, candidates up and down the Republican ticket. So, look, Donald Trump has reshaped the party in his image. He did things that violated the Constitution, and Kevin McCarthy and Mitch McConnell and other weak-kneed leaders let him get away with it. They all bear responsibility for last Tuesday. This is the most predictable stage, where now that it is convenient to cut Trump loose because he's a headwind, they're all ready to do it. But that speaks more to the character of McCarthy, McConnell, and others than it does to anything related to Donald Trump himself. Yeah, and so you talk to these guys on the Hill, right? And so when, you, when you're talking to them, they're giving all sorts of reasons why what happened happened. Let, let me actually, well, I won't even play it again. I mean, Mitch McConnell said, well, you know, people didn't like the vibe. Um, the only reason that Donald Trump lived to fight another day after he was impeached twice is Mitch McConnell literally lobbied to keep him in place to prevent him from being thrown out on his ear, which he could have been. He, he's still a political figure who matters because the Republican Party wanted him to keep mattering. So it's kind of hard to hear them say it. And then, does anyone ever mention abortion when, they, when you ask them what they think the reasons were? Because it seems like that's a big reason. One senator did, Mitt Romney, who I asked just a couple of days ago earlier this week, told me that uh, abortion was a much bigger issue than Republicans had anticipated in the 2022 election. And he's right. Our exit polls show uh, that abortion was the second uh, most important issue to voters, just a few points behind inflation. Mm -hmm. And uh, those voters supported Democrats by a margin of 76 percent to 23 percent, which is quite extraordinary. Now, not a single Republican I've talked to has said it isn't worth it, because the old adage goes, what's the point of power if you're not going to use it? Mm -hmm. This is something they believed in strongly enough to want to use it. But beyond that, Joy, there's an enormous amount of chaos and finger-pointing within the party about what went wrong, simply because people don't agree, Republicans don't agree about what went wrong. There is that, the, the core of this fight is between Rick Scott and Mitch McConnell. Uh, Scott, of course, challenged McConnell for leadership, lost by a big margin. Scott's view is that Republicans did not do enough to inspire their base, to inspire conservative voters with a sufficiently aggressive vision, and that's why they lost McConnell's view, as you just played there, is that's a bunch of nonsense. McConnell's view is they lost moderates, they lost independents by being the party of chaos. He talked about how they frightened voters in the middle. That's quite strong language from Mitch McConnell. But even McConnell didn't blame Trump. Right. Even McConnell didn't go as far as to say Mc uh, Trump is the, the cause of that chaos. Some other Republican senators I talked to did kind of hint at that. They made clear that the former president's talk about election denial, his refusal to accept uh, his own defeat in the election, kind of overshadowed the Republican message. And uh, there's plenty of data that shows that as well. And, and even what you're saying, and thank you for that reporting, but, you know, David, it brings me right back to my original point. The thing that has inspired Republican voters, and you were a Republican politician for a time when you were still in the party, the thing that has motivated Republican-based voters for decades, since I was in high school, is abortion. It used to be that when you did a poll and somebody said abortion is important to me, 72 percent of them were anti-abortion. And they would actually vote for people they didn't even like that much because they thought that they could get Roe overturned. Here is Mitch McConnell bragging in 2019 about getting these judges on. Here's Mitch McConnell. I was shocked that uh, former President Obama left so many vacancies and didn't try to fill those positions. I'll Senator, tell you why. I'll tell you why. I was in charge of the uh, of what we did the last two years of the Obama administration. I give I, and I will give you full credit for that. And by the way, take a bow. All right. That was a good life. And here are the justices, two of the ones that, uh, that Donald Trump signed off on, joking about taking away women's rights. I had the honor this term of writing, I think, the only Supreme Court decision in the history of that institution that has been lambasted by a whole string of foreign leaders <laughs> who felt perfectly fine commenting on American law. 
One of these was uh, former Prime Minister Boris Johnson, but he paid the price. <laughs> David Jolly, as I talk to even religious uh, voters, particularly women, but even men uh, in this cycle, you know what scared them in the suburbs, what freaked them out, and what made them say, I'm going to vote for every single Democrat on this ticket? Yeah. That. The contempt of the Supreme Court <laughs> to rip away half the population's rights over their own bodies, joke about it, and think that it was fine, and then also threaten to pass a national abortion ban, which Lindsey Graham said he was going to do. The extremism on the abortion position in which women who had ectopic pregnancies were having to flee the states they were in. How do Republicans yeah. not see <laughs> that that cost them the midterms? Because it is what cost them the midterms. Yeah, Joy, you're, you're exactly right. The anti-abortion plank within the Republican Party has been part and parcel of the party since it captured the evangelical movement in the 80s, right? It was a deliberate attempt by Republicans to, to grow a partnership with the evangelical movement. And it was easy for Republicans to become hardened absolutists when there was never the opportunity to actually achieve that. And so they never really had to test that politically. It was enough to keep their base. But what happened coming out of Dobbs is, to your exact point, I think even within the evangelical movement, there were people, there are people today who may never identify themselves as pro-choice for whatever reason. It's just anathema to how they identify. But they realized they were pro-Roe all along. And Republicans missed that politically. Yeah. And it's become a disaster for them, and I don't think they can get themselves out of this even going into 24. They can't even in Kentucky, in Mitch McConnell's own home state, a, a a measure to protect abortion rights in Kentucky passed.